Hello everyone and welcome to this session on what is DNS or Domain Name System by IntelliPad. A domain name system is a naming database in which internet domain names are located and translated into IP address. The domain name system maps the name people use to locate a website to the IP address that a computer uses to locate that website. Now this is just an overview of DNS. Let's dive deep into what is DNS and what are its all components. But before we begin the session, Make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us. Hello everyone and welcome to IntelliPad. In today's session, we are going to learn about what is DNS, what purpose it serves and how does it work. So, you must have encountered the processing of DNS in your day-to-day -day life. Whenever you want to access information online or whenever you open a web page, the DNS works for that purpose. So, let's get ahead. Let's take a look at our agenda for today. At first, we will discuss what, about what is DNS. Moving ahead, we will learn about what are IP addresses. And then, we will learn how does DNS work. After that, we will learn about the DNS lookup and the steps involved in it. Moving further, we will get to know what is DNS resolver. After that, we will learn about all the types of DNS queries. And at last, we will take a look at all the security related concerns of DNS. So let's start with the first topic for today. What is DNS? So DNS or the domain name system does the job of translating the domain names to IP addresses, thus making the computer able to understand and make the browser load the requested resources. You can also say it acts like a contact book for the computer. Now let's discuss about what are IP addresses. IP address or an internet protocol address is a unique address that every app device gets associated with with the internet which has a set of rules for the data sent through internet and different machines use it to track down the device. It is for the most part displayed as 4 octets of numbers from 0 to 225 addressed in decimal structure rather than the binary structure. In order to access a web page, one must enter its assigned IP address to make the browser able to direct the user towards it. The DNS acts as a translator which does this job and dispenses us with the requirement to remember those IP addresses. And uh, these IP addresses are so much mind-boggling and are, you can say, so much hectic that uh, it becomes almost impossible for uh, a user to learn all those IP addresses or to remember them. IP addresses comes in two forms. The first one is IPv4 and the second one is alphanumeric ones like uh, IPv6. Now let's take a look at how does TNS work. So when a user wants to access a page, an interpretation should happen between what a client types and their browser like IntelliPad.com and the machine accommodating address required to find that website page. There are basically three servers which do the job of loading a web page. Let's understand them. The first one is DNS Recursor. The DNS Recursor is a server intended to get questions from client machines through applications like internet browsers. It can be said that it acts like a search option in phone's icon menu which searches the particular app that you type in. The second one being root name server. The root name server is the initial phase in translating the domain names into IP addresses, thus serving as a kind of perspective to other locations. And at last comes the TLD name server. The top level domain server is the next step in searching for a particular IP address. Now let's discuss about DNS lookup. So from an overall perspective, the DNS lookup is the interaction by which a DNS record is gotten back from a DNS server. Let's discuss about all the steps involved in DNS lookup. The first step in DNS lookup is that the DNS recursive resolver gets the query traveled through the internet of the inputted link of the desired web page that the user wants to access. Then in the next step, the resolver then looks for the query in the DNS root name server. After that, the resolver is then responded with the location of a TLD server by the root server, which stores the data for its spaces. Then in the next step, the resolver makes a solicitation to the .com TLD. After that, the TLD server then answers with the IP address of the name server. In the next step, a query is then sent to the name server by the recursive resolver. In step number 7, the IP address for the link of the web page gets returned back to the resolver from the name server. And in step number 8, then in the next step, the internet browser gets answered with the IP address of the requested domain by the DNS resolver. And then the request for the web page is made by the web browser. In the second last step, 
the http request is made by the web browser to the ip address and in the final step the web page gets opened in the web browser by the server at that ip so till now you came across the term dns resolver many times now let us understand thoroughly what it means and what its purpose actually is the dns resolver is the main stop in the dns query and answerable for managing the client that made the underlying solicitation the resolver then begins the arrangement of queries which at last prompts a url being converted into the required ip address it's essential to separate between a recursive dns query and dns resolver as the query alludes to the request made to a recursive dns resolver requiring the goal of the prompted query a dns resolver is the pc that acknowledges a recursive query and cycles the reaction by making the vital solicitations now let's learn about all the types of dns queries so there are three types of dns queries the first one being recursive query after that iterative query and at last the non recursive query let's learn about the iterative query in this query if the question dns server doesn't have a counterpart for the query name it will return a reference to the dns server a level lower of the domain name space it will then make an inquiry to the reference address this interaction will keep on going until either a break or error happens now let's learn about recursive query in this query a dns client expects that a dns server will answer the client with either the mentioned asset record or an error message if the record is not found and at last the non recursive query it will happen usually when a dns resolver client questions a dns server for a record that it approaches either in light of the fact that it's definitive for the record or the record exists within its cache now let's take a look on all the security related concerns of dns initially security concerns were not that significant plan contemplations for dns programming or any product for sending on the early internet as the organization was not open for support by the overall population in any case the extension of the internet into the business area during the 1990s changed the necessities for safety efforts to safeguard information trustworthiness and client verification so dns reactions customarily don't have a cryptographic signature prompting many assault prospects the domain name system security extensions dnssec change dns to add support for cryptographically marked reactions dns curve has been proposed as an option in contrast to dnssec different expansions for example tsig and support for cryptographic verification between confided in peers and are usually used to approve zone move or dynamic update activity so a dns server is what makes the complex task of translating domain names into ip addresses so simple without it it would be nearly impossible for humans to remember access and manage all the ip addresses every time one wanted to access information through the internet one can say this whole evolution of this digital era stands solely on the pillars of dns so that was all for today guys Thank you and have a nice day. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in cyber security, then Intellipat has a post graduation certification in cyber security and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts.